architecture has always been a game of trying to bend or explore the freedom within the same rule book. When you go to Mars, those rules are completely changed. The Mars uh, uh, Science City is basically uh, a project that is meant to be an, an instant prototype manifestation of what a future city on Mars uh, would look like and feel like. One of the miracles about Mars is that, you know, the reason that we have a 24-hour cycle on Earth is because millions of years ago, another planet or a giant meadow or hit Earth, and it left Earth spinning with the speed of one revolution every 24 hours. Mars has a day of 24 hours and, and 40 minutes. And then finally, I think the, the most incredible is that the reason we have uh, four seasons is because as Earth rotates around the sun, it's tilted at an angle of 23 and a half degrees. Mars has the exact same tilt. It's almost too good to be true that our most immediate neighbor is so incredibly uh, uh, habitable. Once you start going there, uh, of course, you, people don't want to live in a tin can. Uh, so if you go to Mars, you want to try to create uh, an enjoyable uh, environment. You want to have access to, to green, to plants, to parks. You want to have daylight. You want to have like breathable air. You want to have a reasonable temperature. On Mars, we're gonna to have to protect against radiation. So we looked at different ways to create an inhabitable environment. So one obvious idea is to, to make inflatable uh, domes. So to use the, the pressure differential, uh, to create very light transparent uh, domes. Uh, they can contain uh, breathable air, but they give you zero protection from uh, radiation. Uh, but on the good side, they actually have daylight and it feels almost like being outdoor. Then you can 3D print with the local regolith that gives you more radiation protection. And then finally you can excavate through the, the rock, which gives you full protection, but that's like living in a basement. So um, none of these three strategies work on their own, but when you combine them, suddenly you tick all the boxes. So Imagine, you know, on Earth you have inside or outside. On Mars you will have, you know, outside where you need to have a, a space suit. Then you have outside, which is inside the, the dome, where you have daylight and air, but you have a little bit too much exposure to radiation, so you shouldn't be there too much. And then you can be inside the building, so then you can be uh, uh, underground. We're going to use 3D printing, as good as it exists today. Uh, we're going to use inflatable membranes, the, the best materials we can find today. Um, and we're going to experiment with uh, agriculture, aeroponics, aquaponics, to try to create a self-sustained uh, environment. So in that sense, it's almost like this idea of like, rather than waiting for like 100 years, let's start today. Actually, I would say that the technologies that will make us successful in space is basically understanding how to create circular economies high-performing uh, materials. You need to create um, high-performing uh, photovoltaic, self-cleaning uh, uh, surfaces, etc. So at the end of the day, the same technologies that will make us strive in space are going to be the technologies that will make us exceptional custodians uh, of the ecosystem we already have. Architecture is the art and science of turning fiction into fact. If today is now, fact is everything that has been and is, and fiction is everything that could be and potentially will be. We're not just recreating something that has, been, that has always been there. We're giving form 
to the future that has never been given form before.